bit more travel advice for would-be adventurers. One thing is, don't believe what people say, including me. Everything that you hear comes from a certain experience, a certain time, a certain vision. And you can consider what's being said, but it's not the ultimate truth. So I think really we need to be wary. Sometimes I have been told before, you know, be careful of this certain area, it's really dangerous. So I was petrified to go to that certain area. I would not go and when I was once stranded, it was in El Alto in Bolivia, at night with my cameras and my charango, at about 10 o'clock, I was so freaked out that I always, almost, it was fright or flight, really. I mean, I wasn't the only one also. I was on this very busy street and I saw this woman with two kids and thought, oh my goodness, let's stick together. So, I mean, I suppose that that worked to a certain extent, but paralyzing yourself with fear is not really helpful. And I, I came to learn that that particular place, uh, El Alto uh, in Bolivia, Seja and all that area, while perhaps it has an element of danger, I think for the most part people are good. And as long as you're not silly, um, take precautions, don't go flashing all your money and your expensive mobile phone around and wear all your gold jewelry, have some common sense and you'll be okay. Why are you going to deprive yourself of all these different experiences because one person said it's perhaps not safe? Uh, consider it, sure. But remember that's not the ultimate truth. And uh, that hap happened to me again. I was, I was commissioned by an editor in London to go to the Gambia. And it was an all-inclusive place where we were put, being put up. And the lady at reception said, you know, don't go outside the compound, it's not safe, unless you want to go on one of our tours. Now, obviously, she has a reason to instill fear in me so that they could make more money and keep the money circulating in the hotel and the compound and all their excursions and whatnot. What she didn't know, though, was I was commissioned by the editor and the, per the people that I was supposed to be afraid of were the people that were my contacts. <laughs> and in the end, those were the people I ended up photographing for two weeks. And I learned a whole new perspective being immersed in their lives, seeing the way that they live. They were the street hustlers. They're known as bumpsters in the Gambia. And a lot of people will have you fear them. And I'm sure there are some hustlers that perhaps could be a bit dangerous. But for the most part, the people that I met are just trying to make a living. Their education may not be as high as it could be due to poverty, due to lack of opportunity. So they're options for employment are limited. They're very creative people and they're not robbing anyone. They're just getting commissions, doing a service, finding someone a taxi or a hotel or a club or bringing someone to the beach or finding a contact for that person and taking a commission and taking a commission from the person that they're bringing them to. That's fair. It's business. And I think that they get a bad rap. A lot of people will speak poorly of the bumpsters or the hustlers. And although, I mean, some of them are very persistent and it can be annoying, they're just trying to put food on the table. So don't necessarily listen to everything people say. Experience it for yourself and make your own opinion. Have your own experience. It may com be completely different from what people have warned you about. I know in my case with the hustlers that uh, I ended up working with, I ended up photographing them in their daily life. 
they were tremendous people, very creative, with lots of stories and lots of dreams. So see the world from a different perspective. Have a conversation. Have an experience. Gain an understanding. Don't believe me. <laughs> Find out for yourself.